Hello and welcome to Rudy's Retro Intel. On this video today we'll be talking about different peripheral cards you can add to your Apple II series computer. As you can see I have my case for the Apple IIe. Figured it'd be a nice platform to show the cards. So let's peek around and get started. First on our list is one of the essential cards you'll need for your Apple II is the Disk II interface card. It's a interface card that allows you to plug in your floppy drives five and a quarter inch floppy drives into your Apple computer. It boots from drive one, it's marked here as drive one, and drive two is a slave drive. That means that you can have uh, an application running on drive one and use drive two to save your files while the first drive is being used to actually run the program. Um, it, is the, it is the one and only card that I know of that hasn't changed over the years of the life of the Apple II series although there are additional cards you can add for floppies. The next card on the list is the Apple II I.O. card. This card allows you to plug in externally to the 3.5 or 3.5 inch floppy drive. It can be used as your boot drive or used together with your disk to interface card. You can plug this into your slot 6, which is the boot slot, and use this in slot 6 or 7, or make this your boot drive, whatever you feel is best for your circumstances. Next on the list is the Apple 80 column and 64 bit expansion card, which sits in slot three or the auxiliary port. This card gives you not just 64K of memory, but also allows you to switch from 40 to 80 columns, which makes better for, which makes for better viewing when printing uh, your document or doing a screenshot of some kind and is the um, only card that sits on the Apple IIe only, will not fit in the Apple II Plus or the Apple uh, uh, II. Next on the list is the language card, which sits in slot zero and only slot zero. This card allows you to add an additional 16K of memory. The memory sits here as on the top of the card. There's a ribbon cable that plugs from here into your Apple II Plus, which is the one of the memory slots. You pull out that RAM chip out of that, out of that socket and you pop it into this card here. Another essential card is a super serial card, which fits into any slot, but usually sits in slot two, but not in slot five. The serial card is used for many things. Primarily you can use it for a printer, serial printer that is, um, external modem, which you would plug in through a cable which sits here to the back of the Apple computer. Uh, you can also use it as a terminal. Switches here indicate the usage of the uh, unit, including this uh, small jumper block, which you turn from one to the other if it's using for a modem or as a serial uh, device. The baud rate runs from 9600 bits per second up to 115,200 bits per second. Although using the higher numbers gives it faster performance and is usually recommended to use the maximum uh, baud rate that your card can provide and the additional equipment that you're plugging into can support. Super Serial Card was released in 1981 and utilizes a MOS technology 6551 serial communications chip. Here we have a parallel card called the Grappler Plus. This card allows you to plug in a printer or plotter using a parallel port which provides faster communications with your device. Here we have an internal modem. This modem is a, a micro modem 2E. It basically sits into a slot, usually slot 4, and provides you a connection here, which allows you to plug your telephone line into here, eliminating the use of a serial card and other, uh, an external modem. Also has a speaker so you can hear the tones when it's connecting. This one here is a micro modem 2E. Again, this is used for connecting externally to bulletin board services, where you can share files, look up messages, and even send fax. The baud rate, which is the rate that data is transferred, can range from 75 baud up to 19,200 or even higher in some newer uh, 
modem cards. The only differences in these cards usually is the baud rate. You'll have to uh, review and check the manuals to see which is the best and which is the best setting for your phone line depending on where you live. You could have a noise on your line which then uh, requires you to reduce your baud rate. Here we have the Echo Plus text-to-speech card. It's a fun card that allows you to convert text to speech and you can change the pitch voice frequency of uh, the output and it's fun because you can actually set it up to read a program out to you as you're running or you can type and have it repeat the letters that you're typing you, again you can change the, the voices and the pitches on the card the card uses a tms5220 chip to allow for the conversion which was a popular unit for many synthesizers at the time here we have cpm cards one is the microsoft soft card and is based on the popular Z80 processor and is used uh, for many business related applications like WordStar, um, database programs, uh, spreadsheet type programs, etc. This card runs at 4 megahertz and is used for large uh, business applications. So most of the business tools would need a Z80 card and would sit in slot four or it really could sit any slot except for five. This one here is a clone. As you can see, it looks basically identical. The clone cards were very popular too because of the reduced price that they could get away with selling the cards. This next CPM card is the Apply card. I'm not sure if I pronounced it right, but I believe it's pronounced Apply. The Personal Computer Peripheral Inc. PCPI card sits in slot 4 or any slot really um, it has a much faster Z80 processor which runs at 6 megahertz it also provides additional uh, 64k of memory with an add-on adapter you can add an additional 64 making it 128 key this was released in 1982 and become one of the most popular Z80 cards available for two reasons one for the rich features it offered and two for the low cost it was the first choice amongst users. The several of the cards were available from other vendor from vendors like Franklin Computers, and was released in a board called the Ace Dash Eighty, mainly used for the Franklin um, One Thousand series computers. The board was also sold with software. WordStar, for example, by MicroPro released the, their software with a card called the Star Card and is sold as a complete bundle. The 100% compatibility with the Microsoft Soft Card, this card became the most powerful Z80 based peripheral card available to Apple users. Here we have an EEPROM programmer card. Specifically, this is the AP-64E EEPROM programmer card. It's used to create EEPROMs, which you would place in here. Uh, it would be used, used to create EEPROMs 2716, 2732, and 2764 EEPROMs. It worked in the Apple II, 2 Plus, 2E, and the 3. It was a highly specialized card used by programmers and hardware technicians. Not a card you would see on most computers, but if you're a tech of some kind and want to play around creating biases for your computer or others, uh, anything that required a uh, programmable EEPROM, this was the card to use. It's very simple to use and the manual is available online pretty much everywhere and is very, very um, sought out at this time because it can program the 2716s, 32s. Next up is the ROM card. It usually sits in slot 5 as you want to boot off the ROM that you've popped in. Here in this case we have the, this uh, ROM chip has uh, a diagnostics which allows you to boot up um, the computer without any hard drive or anything connected you can boot this up and it does a memory test even uh, I believe even a keyboard test this uh, zip socket allows you to remove the the ROM and put another ROMs like Apple basic integer basic you can put up a uh, auto start ROM for motherboards that don't uh, don't have a proper auto start ROM in it um, you can actually put monitor on there where it allows you to boot up straight into the monitor. 
um, diagnostics, as in this case. Uh, CPM, you can bypass basic and boost right into CPM. However, you still need a Z80 card of some type. As you can see, this is where the EEPROM programmer card we just viewed becomes quite handy. So you can actually program your, your EEPROM on here, remove it once it's finished, pop it in this card and boot up to test right away. Again, very versatile, excellent for using for diagnostics when computers don't boot um, properly. And this card conjunction is excellent. This card here is the booty card, B-O-O-T-I. This booty card allows you to boot a image of uh, your choice onto um, your Apple II. The, the unit comes with another daughter board, which allows you to plug in a USB key. You just program or copy your, your code on the USB key, pop it on the board, and then put the board together like so, and plop into slot uh, five or six, seven, usually slot five if you actually want to boot up off the, off the unit. Um, this allows you to store up to eight disk images um, on any Apple II, 2 Plus, 2E and 2E Enhance, and including the GS. On my unit, I typically inst have installed is the Total Replay, which has a ton of games. You can just quickly select and boot right from the, into the game. AT Pro, which allows you to transfer programs from your Apple II to your modern computer, vice versa, and uh, Copy 2 Plus, Locksmith, or other disk copying programs. Finally, on our list of enhancements, we have a product called the Floppy Emu. What this does is it emulates a floppy drive. It plugs in a cable into your floppy card, or you can use this adapter to plug it into your um, a Macintosh or Lisa computer. The images are stored through a small SD card and can uh, store, uh, you can use it, store and use one of uh, 40K, 400K, 800K, and 1.4 megabyte floppy images, basically acting as a hard drive. Uh, it's also compatible with the Mac 128K through the Mac 2 series. And I use this on my Macintosh Color Classic. Works great. Well, that about wraps up my collection of Apple II cards. Hopefully, if you have other cards not shown here, you will put them in your comments. I would love to hear what you have on your computer. Stay tuned to the end of the video as I have a summary of all the cards and what slot they go into. And if you want, you can just pause the video there and take a look. Thanks for coming, and we'll see you next time.